In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a 40 kilogram mass hanging from two strings and it is at rest in equilibrium. Now there's a similar problem to this where the angles of each side are the same. And that one is definitely going to be a lot more simple. This one is going to be slightly more complex, but with all the same ideas. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and draw in all our forces. We have the force of gravity pulling straight down. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for that. So I have that number available. So 40 kilograms times 9.8 equals 392 newtons. And then we have the force of tension on one end. And I'll call this one my second tension, our T2. And we have another one on the other side, which I'll call T1. Now, as we would normally do, if we have any forces on angles, we're going to go ahead and split that up into its different X and Y components. So on this side, we have a T2X and a T2Y. And then on this side, we have the same thing. We have a T1X and a T1Y. Now we're going to split these up into analyzing the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction. So if we sum up all the forces in the X direction, we only have two of them. So we're going to go ahead and say T2X minus T1X equals zero newtons because our object is at rest. So we know that the sum of all the forces is definitely going to be zero along each of the axes. If we add this T1X to both sides, that means T2X equals T1X. Now for the second one, we're going to sum up all the forces in the Y direction. For this one, we have three. We have two upwards forces, our T2Y and our T1Y. And then downwards, we have our FG, which means that the sum of our two upward forces minus our one downward force is going to equal zero newtons again because our object is at rest we know the sum of all the forces along either of the axes is going to be zero newtons now if we're going to solve for our tensions we're definitely going to have to use a system of equations because we have two unknown variables over here two unknown variables over here the fg we do know that it's 392. it looks like we should start with the forces along the x direction so let's go ahead and rewrite t2x and t1x as well so our T2X is this portion over here. So if we want to use that and include the T2 so that we can solve for that eventually, then we're going to use cosine because the cosine is the adjacent side and the um, hypotenuse side as well. So if we do that, then it's going to be cosine of 40 degrees equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then if we go ahead and cross multiply this up and over, that means T2X equals T2 times the cosine of 40. So we can go ahead and rewrite this force over here of T2X as T2 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And then we can do the same thing for T1X. Um, it's going to look pretty similar, except we have a different angle. So, so instead of calling this T2 times the cosine of 40, we're going to call this T1 times the cosine of 25 degrees so that we get our version of that for our T1 side, our red triangle over here. Now we can either solve for T1 or T2. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and solve for T1 which means that I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of 25. And then that would mean our T1 equals, and then if you take cosine of 40 divided by cosine of 25, it's going to give us a coefficient of 0.85 times T2. Now that we have T1 equivalent to something in terms of T2, we could do a little substitution later. Now for our purple equation, everything in the y direction, we're going to do something similar. We're going to write everything in terms of just T1 and T2 so we can complete the solving process, solving for the tension. 
So if we're looking for the Y component, um, we're not going to be using cosine anymore. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to take our T1Y and our T1Y side is opposite of our 25. And then we want our T1 along with that. So in this case, we're going to use our sine. So it's going to be um, fairly similar looking to this portion over here. We are going to take the sine of the angle and then that's going to equal T1Y over T1. And then we're going to cross multiply that T1 over. So then we're going to get T1 times the sine of 25 degrees. And then over here we have T2Y. So we're going to have that version of it, which is going to be T2 times the sine of 40 degrees because of the different angle on our green side. Then I'm going to add FG to both sides. So I'm going to say equals FG. So basically just sliding this over here. And then actually I'm going to go ahead and cross that out and then call it 392 Newtons. Okay. Now we are ready to do a substitution. If we take uh, this value right over here and that's equal to T1 and we have T1 right over here, we can go ahead and slide that in and substitute the 0.85 T2 in for the T1, which is basically taking 0.85 times the sine of 25. And then I'm coming up with a new coefficient, which is going to be 0.36 times T2. So now we have everything in terms of T2. So we have 0.36 times T2 plus T2 times the sine of 40 degrees. The sine of 40 degrees is about 0.64. So if we add up our two coefficients, then we have 1.00 times T2 equals 392. So if we divide both sides by one, that's basically gonna cancel our one and our 392 is gonna stay the same. So then this is our final answer for T2. And then in order to solve for T1, it's going to be fairly easy because if we know that T2 times 0.85 gives us our T1, then we can go ahead and take our 392 and multiply it by the 0.85. And then if we do that, our T1 is going to equal 333.2 Newtons. And that gives us our final values for the T1 and the T2. So to sum things up, as you normally would, you're going to draw all the forces on your diagram, break everything up into X and Y components so that you can show these some of the forces in the X direction and the Y direction. Now, because we have multiple unknowns, we're going to use a system of equations and solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. We did that with the orange side over here and solve for T1 in terms of T2 so that we, later on when we rearrange things in our purple equation, we could slide in the 0.85 T2 for the T1 that was there. So we have everything in terms of T2. And then I was able to solve for the T2 and then plug that back in to this formula right here and then solve for our T1. And now we have the tension of both of, both of our strings. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.